What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be talking all about embedded communication protocols. So you've probably heard of all the various protocols out there and you're not really sure in what cases you want to use them or what makes them better than each other. And there are quite a bit of protocols. So this video is just going to break down exactly what those are and what their unique uh, features are. So let's start off with what is serial? So you've probably heard this everywhere. Serial communication, serial port, serial this, serial that. Serial just means that the data is sent one bit at a time on one line. That's it. So moving on, what is a UART? So next to serial, this is probably um, one of the words you will hear the most often in embedded communication protocols. And a UART is actually a hardware device. So a UART stands for universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter. And a UART has one wire for sending data and it has another wire for receiving data. And these are referred to as TX and RX. A UART is asynchronous. This means there is no clock signal. And this means that the two devices that, that have UARTs need to configure the UARTs such that they are aware of the transmission speed before they start communicating. Um, otherwise it won't work. And this is commonly referred to as the baud rate. So both devices need to know the baud rate and then they can start communicating. So next up we have another common uh, phrase or word is TTL. And that uh, stands for transistor to transistor logic. And this isn't actually a protocol, it just refers to a five volt source that is uh, used to operate a UART. And that's it. So you'll hear, uh, you know, you'll hear a USB to TTL. And that just means uh, a USB to a UART that is operating at five volts. So next up, we have the RS-232 protocol. So RS-232 just means that the voltage levels are going to be negative three to negative 15 volts for a one and three volts to 15 volts for a zero. So this is an active low communication protocol. And the reason it uses these voltage levels in the first place uh, is for long transmission lines because a five volt TTL UART is not that reliable uh, for really long cables. And in order to fix that, they step up the voltage. So an RS-232 commonly uses a five volt UART, but it needs to uh, change the voltage to uh, fit within the UART's operating range so it doesn't destroy it. So it needs to step uh, like a 15 volt maximum signal down to five volts. And it also needs to invert the signal because a UART is not active low and the RS-232 is active low. Now, another uh, protocol is a USART, or I guess you could refer to this as a device. Um, and this is just a UART with the capability of sending data synchronously if you want. So you don't actually need to send data synchronously, but if you want to, there's an extra wire uh, in order to do that. And what this means is you can transmit data uh, more quickly because synchronous communication is uh, typically faster. And so, yeah, that's really the difference there. So another very common protocol you probably hear all the time is SPI, which stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. Now, SPI uses four cables minimum. And this is master out, slave in, uh, master in, slave out, source clock, and chip select. The benefits of SPI is that it's very fast. Um, in fact, it's one of the fastest because it is synchronous and it's also full duplex. So that's a fancy way of saying that there is bi-directional communication at the same time. Uh, another benefit is one master can control more than one slaves. And the way it does that is through this chip select cable. So each slave will need its own chip select line. And that allows the master to select which 
device it wants to communicate with. So one of the drawbacks of SPY is exactly this chip select line, uh, because that means anytime a new device uh, is gonna be added to the SPY master, uh, or connected to the SPY master, that's a whole new chip select line, and that can quickly grow into a lot of cables, and cables are more expensive, um, well, like more cables means a more expensive system. So typically in electronics, you want to reduce the amount of cables so they have a cheaper device. So moving on. So the last protocol we have here is I squared C. So this stands for inter-integrated circuit. And notice how I pronounced it as I squared C. Some people say I two C, uh, but the more legitimate way is to say I squared C. This is a synchronous protocol. And it's different from SPY in the sense that there are only two cables. You have the data line and you have the source clock line. And this has various drawbacks and benefits depending on how you look at it. So this is different from SPY, where if you recall, there was a dedicated chip select line for each slave device. So you might be wondering, well, then how does each slave uh, communicate with the master independently? So the way it does that is the master will send the address of the slave device right before sending the data. So that tells all the devices, uh, hey, if you're not this address, then don't listen to this. If you are this address, then I'm talking to you. So the benefits of this system is that because there are only two cables, it is cheaper. Uh, one of the drawbacks is that because there are only two cables, uh, you can only send data uh, either from the master to the slave or from the slave to the master at one time. You can't do bi-directional communication at the same time. So that's what half duplex means. So uh, as a result of this, it's not as fast as SPY, but depending on what your needs are, this might be fine. So that wraps up our video today. Uh, hopefully you now have a better understanding of what the difference is between all these protocols and when you might want to use them. And now feel free to go and dive deeply into each of these protocols to your heart's content. So if you made it to the end, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.